In this lesson, I'll show you how to use the simplex method to solve maximization problems. This is question three in the series. The question reads, a manufacturer of bicycles builds racing, touring, and mountain models. The bicycles are made of both aluminum and steel. The company has available 91,800 units of steel and 42,000 units of aluminum. The racing, touring, and mountain models need 17, 27, and 34 units of steel and 12, 21, and 15 units of aluminum, respectively. The first thing that we have to answer is how many of each type of bicycle should be made in order to maximize profit if the company makes $8 per racing bike, $12 per touring bike, and $22 per mountain bike. Now unlike in questions one and two, we are not given the objective function here. In fact, we're not even given the constraints. So we have to build those inequalities and that equation from scratch. Now using the information provided in question A, we can actually come up with the objective function. We'll say that Z, is the optimal or maximum profit that the company will make. And that is equal to eight times X sub one, which I'll represent as my racing bike, plus 12 X sub two, which will represent as the touring bike, plus 22 X sub three, which will account for the mountain models. So this right here is our objective function. Of course, we don't know what x sub one, x sub two, or x sub three are, and that's what we're looking for. The constraints can be modeled using these two sentences. So we're told that 91,800 units of steel are available. You cannot go beyond that. That's the maximum. In addition, we're told that for the bikes, you need 17, 27, and 34 units of steel. So we'll write down 17 x sub one plus 27 x sub 2 plus 34 x sub 3, that amount cannot exceed 91,800. So it can equal 91,800, that's why we have the less than or equal to 91,800. Similarly, another one can be modeled for aluminum. We can write down 12, 21, 15 with the same variables and that cannot exceed 42,000. Of course, x sub one, x sub two, and x sub three need to be greater or equal to zero. So you need to make a note of that. Now that we've written the constraints and our objective function, we wanna change these constraints into equations, and that can be done by introducing slack variables. We had a discussion on slack variables in question one of this series, so if you want something more extensive, be sure to watch question one where we explain why they're used. So to change this constraint into an equation, I'll rewrite it, but I'll introduce a slack variable. So this becomes 17 x sub one plus 27 x sub two plus 34 x sub three plus s sub one is equal to 91,800. And you wanna introduce one for each constraint. So this becomes the same thing plus s sub two is equal to 42,000. Of course, since the objective function is an equation, you don't need to introduce a slag variable for that. For the following step, what I wanna do is change this equation, this one and that one, into an augmented matrix. And this augmented matrix will serve as our initial simplex tableau. This will help us organize our work and help us find what we're looking for. Starting with this equation, I'm going to rewrite it as 17, 27, 34, one, there's no S sub two, so it's zero. There's no Z, introduce another zero for that column, and our constant is 91,800. For this equation, it becomes 12, 21, 15. There's no S sub one here. There is an S sub two. There's no Z, 42,000. And for this equation, you wanna bring the terms on the right side over to the left side. And yes, if you move the terms over to the left side, they become negative. So here we have negative eight, negative 12, negative 22, no slack one, no slack two, but there is a Z, we'll put a one, there's no constant. And just to separate the equations up here with the one that represents the objective, I'll put a line separating them and I'll also put a line separating the constants from the variables. At this point, what you want to do is analyze the numbers that are found right here and you wanna find what your negative indicator is. The negative indicator is the most negative number found 
in your objective function. The most negative number is negative 22. So this will serve as our pivot column. This will be our pivot column. Next, you take this number 91,800 and you divide it by this number. Similarly, you take 42,000 divided by 15 and you look for the number that is the smallest. I'll explain why in a moment. So let's go ahead and find out what those quotients are. We'll take 91,800 divided by 34. 91,800 divided by 34 gives us 2,700. So the quotient is 2,700. And just to make things easy, I'm going to call this x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, s sub 1 sub 2, z in the constant. That way we don't get confused as to what the columns are telling us. The quotient here is 2700 and the quotient here, 42,000 divided by 15, gives us 2800. The smaller of these two numbers is 2700, so 34 will serve as our pivot. In other words, we'll use 34 to make this number and this number into zeros. 34 and this whole row will remain untouched. So using matrix row operations, we need to find a way to make this zero and need to find a way to make that into zero. Let's start with rows one and two. What I will do is multiply this whole thing by 15, and multiply this whole thing by 34, and then subtract row one with row two. That will serve as our new row two. That's shown on your screen right now. This number here becomes 153. And I'll just show you quickly what happened. Multiplying this by 15, 17 times 15 gave us 255. Multiplying 12 by 34 gave you 408. 408 minus 255 gave us 153. So that's exactly what we're doing for each number. Therefore, 21 should become 309. This number is 0. This number, negative 15. This number becomes 34. Given that both of these are 0, that goes un changed and that becomes 51,000. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with rows 1 and row 3. Once again I need this number to become a 0 so I'll multiply this whole row by 34 and this whole row by 22 and then subsequently add row 1 and row 3 together. If you do that correctly the following numbers change. So this minus 8 becomes 102, this becomes 186, that becomes a zero, which is exactly what we wanted. Here, 22, that remains as zero because both of these are zero. This number becomes 34. And over here, multiplying that by 22 gives you 2,019,600. Once you are done making this zero and this zero, you want to rewrite your matrix so that it's easier to understand, clearer for us. This row, of course, hasn't changed, so I'll rewrite it. This row, of course, has changed. It has become 153 all the way through 51,000. And this row has become what you see in black. I'll also separate these. At this point, you want to reanalyze these numbers and notice that none of them are negative. That's a good sign. In fact, if you look at this column, this column and this column, that gives us a lot of important information. What this column is telling us is that we have 34 x sub 3, because that's the x sub 3 column, is equal to 91,800. This means we can solve for x sub 3. And if we do, we end up with 2,700, dividing both sides by 34. This column gives us s sub 2. So we can write down 34 s sub 2 is equal to 51,000. And s sub 2 is equal to 1,500. And for this column, we can write down 34z is equal to 2,019,600. Solving for z, you should end up with 59,400. So what is this information telling us for this company? It tells us that the company should make zero racing bicycles, zero touring bicycles, and 2,700 mountain bicycles. So if you want to maximize profit, forget about these two columns. And of course, you ignore them because of their configuration. They don't have the number zero, zero configuration as these ones did. You make none of those and only make 2,700 of the mountain models. In question B, they ask, what is the maximum possible profit? And for that, well, you look at Z. Z here was 59,400. That's the maximum profit that this company can bring in. 
Question C asks, does it require all of the available units of steel and aluminum to build the bicycle that produce the maximum profit? If not, how much of each material is left over? Compare any leftover to the value of the relevant slack variable. For this, what we can do is look at our first equation. That equation was 17x sub 1, 27, 34 plus s sub 1 and 91,000. I'm going to rewrite that underneath and I'll substitute into x 0, into this x 0, into that x what we found which was 2700 and then I'll solve for s sub 1. So this becomes 0, that becomes 0. 34 times 2700 gives us 91,000. So bringing that 91,000 over s sub 1 is equal to 0. This means that all 91,800 units of steel were used to build this. Of course, we'll do the same thing here. Make that into a zero, that becomes zero, that becomes zero. Applying 2,700 into there, and we know what S sub two is, it's 1,500. So if we multiply 15 times 2,700, we end up with 40,500. 40,500. And the slack variable was 1,500, that's equal to 42,000. This means that only 40,500 were used of the aluminum. Finally, in question D, there are many upstated assumptions in the problem given above. Even if the mathematical solution is to make only one or two types of bicycles, there may be demand for the types not being made which would create problems for the company. Discuss this and other difficulties that would arise in a real situation. Of course, this happens all the time with companies. Uh, for example, if a company is creating a supercar, take for example Toyota, they're probably going to lose a lot of money creating that car because of design and development, but it's still made just for publicity, for example. So yes, the company might be losing money on certain things that they create, but it makes the company popular in the long haul because it gives people something to talk about. So that's something that a company such as this size would consider. And there you have it. That is how to use the simplex method to solve maximization problems.